For the first time in 150 years, an LDS history librarian is unlocking the vault of hundreds of lost sermons by early church leaders. Yeah, the sermons were written in a kind of shorthand, but nobody could really translate the writings until now. Dan Roscone is covering this fascinating story. He joins us now live, and Dan, this is a huge historical undertaking. Yeah, this is big time for the LDS church there, Mark and Shana. You know, imagine finding sermons, hundreds of them, writings and other things like that, and then not being able to read them and you know they're from the 1850s. You want to be able to find out what they say. Well, for the first time, a librarian at the family or the history library for the LDS Church is bringing these sermons to life. We'll add a little loop at the end. That means can. Lejean Purcell Carew. You cut it in half length. Has an amazing gift. Here is a T. That's 30 years in the making. You make it dark. She can actually read. It is a D. A historic form of shorthand. Vowel and vowels are completely optional. I know of no one with my depth of ability. Which in turn and, and is unlocking the lost sermon vault George here at the LDS Church's history library. What I am doing makes documents accessible that no one has read for 150 years. I'm bringing them to life. I'm bringing the people to life because we can see what, what they really were, how they acted, what, what they did. Heber C. Kimball got up one day and said, excuse me if I don't talk right, I forgot my teeth. The story begins in 1852 with an Englishman by the name of George D. Watt, the first baptized member of the LDS Church in Great Britain. Watt had mastered a new popular form of shorthand that was created by another Englishman by the name of Isaac Pittman in 1837. While in Salt Lake, Watt became the church's official recorder, using his shorthand to take notes of hundreds and hundreds of sermons by LDS leaders. This is partly P. Pratt's report on his mission. But there are still hundreds and hundreds. Is Mary Fielding Smith's funeral. That were never transcribed. Nobody's read these. That is, until now. And that's where Legene comes in. This is the shorthand of John Taylor speaking about the martyrdom. One of those documents includes... This is the first day they met in it. The dedication of the historic tabernacle on Temple Square. LDS history always taught it was dedicated in 1875, but with the translation of this historic document... But no record was kept except in shorthand. Lejean learned the tabernacle was actually dedicated on October 6, 1867, eight years earlier. These sermons are of uh, tremendous historical value. And now these lost sermons are getting published for everyone to see on the LDS Church's history website. Here for the first time words that were spoken then and have remained locked away, trapped in, in shorthand. We dedicate ourselves unto thee. Lejean's story begins when she was 22 years old. I was a graduate student at BYU and I needed work very badly. The manuscript librarian told her if she learned Pittman shorthand, he would give her a job. So with the audacity of a 22 year old, I said, I'll learn Pittman shorthand. But as Lejean shows us on the board. Up here it means eat. On the line, it means it. Watt's shorthand is not the same. And the first word was written like this. As just knowing Pittman's shorthand. It's like a whole new language. That's why it took me 30 years to figure out how to read George D. Watt. And so month after month, day after day, hour after hour, Lejean can be seen here at the History Library transcribing these lost sermons. This is the closest we have to the exact words that were spoken. Sound recording was decades away. So we learn exactly how they talk. We see their personalities. We find their faith. We find their struggles. We learn how they really sounded without editing. Each document takes hours and hours to complete. For example, this 20-minute sermon from Brigham Young at the funeral of Mary Fielding Smith took more than 10 hours to transcribe. It can be very exasperating. That's just one sermon of hundreds that are left. It is hard. It is tedious. It is meticulous. It is exhausting. It is draining. But seeing the words pop off these historical pages makes it all worthwhile. But I absolutely love it. I have a deep passion for this work. I'm making them come to life. And you could see that passion and feel it from her as you talk to her there. You know, if you go to the history website for the LDS Church, you'll notice only 10 sermons right now have been published. So there's still hundreds out there still left. Lejean saying that Brigham Young alone still has some 230 sermons that have never been published or transcribed quite yet. A lot of work to do that's left. She says right now she's training her daughter, also some of uh, other students to try and learn this type of short shorthand so they can continue to do this into the future. Mark and Shauna, back to you. Hmm, interesting.